I'd like to establish, I'm going to say those words several times throughout this session, and I'd like to establish a convention where when I say those words, there will be a collective gasp from the audience. So can we try it now? Modern front-end development with astonishing live demo. <gasps> yeah, that's great. I hope my, my little microphone, <laughs> yeah, thanks. <laughs> Jerk. I, uh, someone yawned in the back. <laughs> My little, my little microphone that's recording this is um, picking up. Uh, my name is Matt Rather. Look at that handsome devil. That was taken by a photographer. Uh, I'm a freelance Drupal developer and kind of web generalist. I've been coding, uh, well, I started coding HTML by hand in 1997 and uh, have been at it ever since. I'm a full stack developer. Uh, I'm a generalist because I'm a one man shop. Uh, so I do everything from consulting, information architecture, uh, content strategy, architecture, back-end implementation, Drupal theming, front-end engineering, you know, deployment, a little sysadmin. Uh, my terrible website, if you want to look at it, is at rathercreative.com, W-R-A-T-H-E-R, creative.com, which I thought was a rather creative name for the company. Um, I've been doing Drupal since 4.6, uh, so I built sites in, in 4, 5, 6, and 7, and soon to be 8. I mean, you know, played around with it, but not really done any serious filling. And in case anyone here represents a company, I am most definitely available to be hired. And uh, you can email me or call my awesome Google Voice number, which is my last name. Isn't that, isn't that great? Um, <laughs> Nice. With astonishing live phone number. Okay, so here's, here's what it's going to be. I have a couple of slides that I want to go through that where I'm just going to lay out some of the tools that are in the tool chain that I'm going to be used. Uh, oh, uh, sorry. Uh, talk a little bit about front-end development and why I, think, uh, why I think something like this and some of the recent advances in tooling um, for front-end devs are sort of necessary. Uh, or at least sort of good development for the, uh, you know, for the area as a whole, then kind of go bam, 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 pretty quick through some, through some of the tools, and then the part you all came to see. Uh, so um, as a front-end dev, you ever feel like you don't get no respect? Right? Um, that, that like, uh, I, get the, I get the feeling sometimes that the perception is it's like, you know, people who went to art school and then learned a little CSS. And that doesn't, that's, you know, that's not the case, right? Like, uh, what the back-end guys have, well, it sometimes is the case, but it's not that, fr but front-end engineering is a discipline that I think deserves some respect. Um, but what the back-end guys have is a longer history uh, of doing it, which leads to established best practices and a lot of tooling built out to support those practices. And I'm thinking of things like build processes, right? The convention of a make file, you know, um, Stuff like, stuff like that, but with the advent of modern web apps where more and more stuff is happening in the browser and the advent of frameworks like, you know, uh, JavaScript MVX frameworks like Backbone, um, more and more is moving into the front end. And like, uh, who knew, right, back in 1997 that JavaScript would be the sexy language to learn, right? Do you, do you remember when it was a backwater? When, you know, no one it was one of these things that you'd, oh, God, I guess I can do that. Um, yeah, it was bad back in the day, right? Like, and then, then jQuery changed. I mean, the, the kind of the cross-browser libraries of which jQuery was sort of the winner uh, changed a lot of that. Um, but honestly, a lot of the biggest wins you can get in website performances are in the front-end uh, improvement. Uh, are in the area of front-end improvement. So, you know, uh, yeah, unlike Rodney uh, Dangerfield, may he rest in peace. Um, I think we do deserve some respect. So here, here are some tools. Uh, who doesn't know what SAS is? Okay, what? No? Okay, we mostly know what SAS is. This is awesome. We can add variables to CSS, this is actually going to be good because we can go through this stuff. Uh, so we can define blue and margin. Um, uh, the awesome thing built, built into vanilla SAS syntax is that you can, you know, set that color on the border color 
uh, and then use like the darken function, and then you can do math on this stuff. So the, you can say the mar we're going to divide margin by two, which is actually something the Zen Grids framework does, which I didn't realize. I was wondering why my margins were half the size I set them in a recent pro project, and it's because they divide them by two. So you can uh, set variables and then perform operations on those variables, and that compiles down to look something like that. Um, you can use mixins. Uh, Not quite sure. Oh, I didn't even put the mix in on there. But y'all know what SAS is. <laughs> y'all know what SAS is. Um, oh, this isn't mixins. This is. Uh, oh, I got this. I got the titles wrong. This is the nesting and extending slide, right? So uh, table H one, we can set a margin, and then uh, within that nest, another selector uh, TD with a class of of LN compiles down to that, uh, and then the li stuff. I actually, this is not one I use a lot, but you can even properties like font family, font weight, and font size, you can nest like that. I don't use that a lot, but that's a, that's a handy little one. Okay, this is the mix-ins slide, whatever it says at the top. So you can define little functions and uh, include them in other rules, uh, and you can also uh, use extends to produce output like that. So you can have an error class and a bad error class. Oh, the error class should have a period in front of it, but uh, a bad error class. And uh, you can inherit the uh, rules in one class. And this is, ma this is mainly a semantic win, right? Because why have, you know, div class equals error, bad error? You have that useless little error uh, class hanging around. This way you can get everything out of error with bad error. And Compass is a library. I mean, just like you can choose programming languages for the libraries, uh, Compass, who knows what SAS is but does not know what Compass is? All right, it's a hip group. Um, you can do uh, uh, da, 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 sprites. That we're all onto icon fonts now, right? This is genericons, which is from the WordPress people. Uh, and this is Font Awesome, which is uh, designed to work with, with Bootstrap. Um, speaking of Bootstrap, the front end, the front end frameworks, uh, is everyone built with Bootstrap? Yeah? No? No one knows what Bootstrap is? Everyone knows what Bootstrap is, yeah? Okay, great. Awesome. Um, the, well, for the sake of the recording and for posterity, I'll just uh, run through these bullets uh, quickly, I, I've gotten sick of seeing sites on the internet where it's clear that this is just vanilla bootstrap that has been unmodified, untouched by human hands, right, since it was compiled. Uh, but um, it, is, it is pretty useful. It covers 80% of use cases. Uh, you get, uh, for your money, which is zero dollars, you get grid systems, decent uh, typography, and some uh, commonly used elements. And you get JavaScript to power interactivity. So there's the Bootstrap um, homepage and also Zurb Foundation it is maybe lesser known, but if you're into Bootstrap but you feel like you want um, something a little more foundation might be something to look at. Okay, so, so a, a little bit of tooling. But now we have problems and need tools for them. The first one is, is too many libraries. How do you get jQuery? Right? How do you put jQuery into your project? You know, assuming you don't get it for free with a tool that's scaffolded out already like Drupal. Go to the website, download it, open the zip, right? Remember the URL and wget right into your project? Um, no, hell no. What about when you get more complex and you have something like Backbone that has dependencies, right? Where you have to have jQuery running and you have to have underscore running before Backbone will do anything. Uh, three URLs that you're going to remember in wget into your, into your, uh, into your project? Hell no. Um, so the first kind of uh, higher order tool that I want to point out is Bower. Uh, Bower was developed at Twitter. It's a package manager for the web. It, it has a, a uh, sort of generic, unopinionated solution to 
to package management, but you can see uh, in the Bower configuration, which is a, a file that has a JSON object in it, um, you can see the dependency models. So other tools that have that are more opinionated about build stacks um, can uh, can consume them, um, and you install it with uh, with npm. Um, in fact, everything I'm going to talk about is installed with Node, and I will demo a little later getting a getting a Bower package. Um, yeah, actually, let's you know what, let's do it now. Right, so I have an empty directory here. Bower install. Let's just say jQuery. <coughs> Goes out and grabs it for me, and what I get is a uh, Bower components directory that has jQuery, uh, has the jQuery and directory in it, which is cloned from the repo on GitHub. It's cloned from a special repo, I guess, a special Bower repo on GitHub. Um, but I have nothing else but that. So at the install fest, I was telling them that this is the command to install Drupal. Uh, so you can pass it the save flag. You get the same thing. But what you also get is a bower.json file, which uh, uh, takes the name of the directory as the, the name of the project, um, gives you a version for your project, and then establishes dependencies. You can break out uh, development dependencies for things that you want in a development environment. Uh, and um, yeah, and so you can do this. So, you know, Bower under uh, install backbone. Oh, I want to save also. Mm -mm. So now we have now we have backbone. The dependencies on backbone aren't set right, uh, but that is all right. Okay, so um, back in. So Bower Bower pretty useful. Uh, so now we have all our libraries, but our next problem is we have too many script tags. So now we've got to get all these things included in the HTML, um, and especially because we are good developers and we're going to put all of our backbone models, views, uh, etc., collections into separate files and namespace them in separate directories and whatnot. We got to load them all into the page. So uh, a lot of script tags, that's a terrible idea because one gets out of order and your whole application doesn't work and you spend you know 90 minutes debugging a, a stupid simple thing or maybe that's just me. Um, so require.js is a module loader. Uh, it's a JavaScript file and you uh, you drop it into your page and point it at the data main uh, and give it a data main uh, data attribute which uh, points to scripts.main.js, uh, script slash main.js in your uh, directory. Uh, this is what the this is what the tree structure would look like with an index.html file, a scripts directory, require and main together. Right, and so in main you can require uh, uh, so require loads main. Main can uh, load other modules. They're all defined using AMD. Um, the asynchronous module definition, which is a you know a conventional way for JavaScript modules to expose an object to other JavaScript modules that it can then consume, um, and so this require function that you get from require.js that fires inside of your main JavaScript file uh, takes two arguments. One is an array, a JavaScript array of dependencies, and then is a um, uh, then a function that fires once all of those dependencies uh, have been loaded. Um, if yeah, uh, if uh, the util.js file that we have defines a module using define, which is the asynchronous module definition technique for, for defining a module, that module can have dependencies and on and on and on down the chain. They'll all be loaded before they'll all be loaded before your uh, your script fires. So the I mean the idea is right. Everything loads all all your your whole application loads, and then just main JS could be as simple as new app view, right? Could be one line that says go, uh, and because all the all the dependencies are already loaded, 
Okay, so next problem. We have too many things to do, right? So we have SAS and Compass. We want to uh, compile it and squish, squish down to one script, by which, of course, I mean style sheet uh, to reduce our number of HTTP requests. We want to optimize images, squish down those JPEGs. We want to compile CoffeeScript to JavaScript. We want to lint the JavaScript that we have. We want to run automated tests that we may have. We want to concatenate and minify the scripts. We want to rewrite the script tag so that there's one script tag with a giant JavaScript blob inside it that's absolutely unreadable because it's been pushed through Closure Compiler or something like that. And we want live reload on the page, by the way, so that we don't have to tab over and, uh, and hit Command R. So we got Grunt. Uh, Grunt is a JavaScript task runner. Um, it's, it's, again, a node, uh, node module. And it uh, automates tasks uh, that you can and lets you define sort of custom uh, commands. Um, so you know, grunt compile might do all the uh, do all the JavaScript stuff, squishing it down into one file and linting it. Grunt test might run your test suite. Grunt build might take your whole app directory and create a distribution directory uh, out of it. Um, yeah, so uh, what you get from from Grunt, it adds a couple things to your repo, and these things should be checked into version control. Uh, a package.json file that's uh, consumed by NPM so that Node knows what the Grunt modules are. Uh, and a Grunt file, which is a, another one of these JavaScript objects. It's, it, it's written for Node, so it uses exports, uh, module.exports. Um, and so this one... This is some boilerplate code that came off of their website, but it's 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 looking like this is defining a couple of tasks. This is defining an uglify task that takes uh, that takes a JavaScript file and uglifies it into a JavaScript uh, .min.js file from the source directory into the build directory, and by the way, puts a banner with the name uh, with the name of the um, puts a banner with the name of the project uh, up at the top. So these are all these are all like things that you do a lot when you build uh, when you build an application and in the front end um, these build processes uh, we can have sort of this this kind of make file uh, type of structure as well. So now the problem is that we have too many tools, right? Uh, one does not simply scaffold out a website. What we need is one tool to rule them all. When I say tool, I am not talking about myself. Um, so Yeoman uh, is, a, is a yet higher order, yet more abstracted tool that does the web, the web app scaffolding that lets you, uh, you know, just sort of put all the pieces in place um, to, to begin developing using these, these packages, right? So... Uh, if I were to type yo web app, this is what I would get. I'd get a grunt file, I'd get a bower.json, and I'd get a package.json in, um, uh, in the root directory and in what, in what would be the root of the repo. Uh, also node modules for anything, any uh, dev modules you're loading in. Um, it scaffolds out a testing suite for you so that you can just start writing tests without putting in the bo boilerplate code. Uh, it scaffolds out a styles directory in, um, oh, I think that's actually underneath the app directory. I, I played around with the output of the, of the, the tree command so that it would fit. But, uh, you know, then you get an app directory where you actually do your, where you actually do your development, where the Bower components are installed, um, and where you can do, uh, you know, you can write coffee script or yeah, vanilla JavaScript, whatever you want. Um, and you can then uh, grunt build, and it'll squish all of that app directory down into a distribution directory where you still have your, your HTML files, you still have your static assets, but suddenly everything has a hash on it because it's been through the grunt process. Um, those PNGs, though I imagine the ones that are distributed with Bootstrap are pretty optimized anyway, those PNGs are run through optimization. Um, the scripts are... are uh, you know, concatenated, linted, minified, uh, uglified, uh, you know, and you can actually tell it to leave certain scripts alone. For example, if you want Modernizer to run by itself in the head uh, rather than including it at the, the bottom of your page, um, 
you can designate certain scripts to be left alone, and then you know you get a, you get the style squished down into one uh, by running grunt build in your Yeoman scaffold web app. So let's I mean let's start. Um, this is the part that is a little nervous about going into this, but let's start. So I'm in an empty directory. You see, I have nothing up my sleeve. Uh, so I'm going to yo uh, backbone. Yo is the yeoman. Um, command. And if Wi-Fi is slow, I actually ran this earlier uh, so that we don't have to download all these things. Do I want Twitter bootstrap for SAS? Yes, indeed, I do. Do I want require.js? Of course I do. So Yeoman now uh, has a what's called a generator, has a pre-built scaffolding for uh, for a backbone app. Um, it has them for a lot of things. You can uh, search NPM, search the NPM uh, package list for uh, Yeoman Generator, and you will see a, a whole list of them. Great. And so what we have now, actually that's going to be too big to understand. Uh, this is, uh, what we have now in our to-do directory um, is uh, is an app directory where we're going to do our actual development, uh, Bower file, Grunt file for task running, and let's just take a look at this and see what it looks like. Um, this is a, a slightly more complicated one. Um, it's defining tasks including watch to watch and rerun uh, if we change files, uh, connect, which I think is alias to server, um, to run a little lightweight web server so that we can see our work as we go. Uh, some subtasks like coffee and compass to do coffee script and, and um, compass compiling. Uh, minify, you know, lots of stuff. Images, CSS, HTML. Copy stuff over. Uh, go grab all the power dependencies, compile them. Uh, lots and lots and lots and lots of stuff, and so we have, and then it uh, it registers these tasks, so we know what the commands are that are uh, that are available to us. Uh, package.json is for Node. Node modules is where all this grunt code lives that's going to run, and test would be a testing suite, which I'm going to skip just in the interest of time. Uh, just in the interest of time today. Okay, so let's uh, let's open up the app directory in our in Sublime. This is what the app folder looks like. Um, gives us a uh, gives us an index.html file, and let's just see what that is. So I'm going to run grunt server, which is going to open up a lightweight web server, pop open my browser and then start watching for changes in the directory and automatically recompi recompiling every time I make a change. So this is the, this is the vanilla output of this, of this guy. The cool thing is that you get, though it doesn't always work, even without the Chrome plugin, uh, you get live reload. So when I save, oh that was nice, I'm glad that worked. I'm not switching over, I'm not reloading, I just save and it uh, thank you. I appreciate that. All right, so I'm going to go through and get rid of all of this boilerplate stuff that uh, that is dropped into here. I'm going to get rid of the Chrome frame, I'm going to get rid of Google Analytics. Um, at the bottom is our uh, required JS script. In the in the um, okay, so it, it scaffolds out this you know this HTML5 boilerplate stuff. I'm actually going to get rid of the conditional comments just for the sake of uh, clarity of code on the screen. So HTML fine, 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 and um, so everyone writes it to do app in backbone I realize it's hackneyed but we're going to call it to drew uh, because of uh, because of Drupal's not really being included in this presentation at all um, 
that's your little that's your little dose of Drupal right there. So we get uh, we get a link to the style sheet in main.css. Let me just point out that over in the styles directory that doesn't exist, and yet the web page is loading. So Yeoman is doing, or Grunt rather, uh, is doing the work behind the scenes to compile our, our SAS down to CSS and it loads uh, like it ought to. Uh, Modernizer is loading, we really don't need it for this, but that's okay, it won't slow us down too much. And here's our body. Okay, so I'm gonna scaffold out this, this web app. Uh, who uses Emmet for code completion? No? So, yeah? One guy. Oh, good. I'm glad I finally have hit on something that you don't all know about already. Uh, Emmet is a uh, is a little tool. It's available at, for a lot of editors as a package that lets you. Um, well, it's probably best explained with a demo. So here's uh, here is um, I don't know a common thing, right? L i u l l i, and it auto expands to that. U-L-L-I, four of them. U-L-L-I-A uh, uh, class link with the text item, whatever the number is, times four. Nice, that's the sound I was hoping for all afternoon. So, um, I actually scaffolded this out before as I was preparing, and so I've done this this whole bootstrap config in one long thing. So we need a div.container so that uh, bootstrap you know kicks in, uh, div.row to establish that we're in a row, div.span6 for about half the page, offset three so it's in the middle of the page. Great, and so then I'm going to put the app in a section called uh, to-do app with an ID of to-do app. Uh, section needs a header. Header is going to have an H1, uh, which is going to have the text DCLA to Drew. Um, next to the header, we're going to put a paragraph inside the paragraph and in input so that we can type a new to Drew item. Uh, in Bootstrap, you can give uh, inputs the span classes, the, the grid classes, and they'll automatically snap to the right width, which is very nice if you've ever had trouble uh, getting your inputs to line up, all that's done for you. We're gonna give this so that we can target it in JavaScript. We're gonna give this an ID of new to do, and in, we'll give some HTML5 placeholder text. What do you want to drew? Awesome. Awesome. And we'll also set the autofocus uh, attribute on that HTML tag. All right. We're a few levels in to our HTML structure now, and we actually want to start building below the header tag. We want to start building like the main tag or the, the div ID main tag, right? So uh, the it, with Emmet, the command for this is uh, caret. So we're going to go up two levels and start uh, and do plus. Plus creates siblings, uh, greater than creates descendants. So section ID main, within that uh, you uh, an unordered list with the bootstrap well class on it. And we're going to call it todos so we can target it with CSS. And we're going to give the ID of todos so that we can target it with JavaScript in that. Uh, we're going to have a bunch of stuff, so I'm opening parentheses for uh, order of operations stuff. Um, we have a UL, so we want an LI. Uh, inside the LI is going to be an input that we're going to call uh, toggle. And a uh, type of a checkbox so that we can uh, toggle our um, to drew on and off. Uh, next to that, we're going to have a span. Uh, and for the time being, we'll give it a little placeholder text. So to do, and then the number of the element, and then we want an a, uh, we want an anchor tag with no uh, href. We're going to call it delete uh, and give it the presentational classes from bootstrap of button and button danger. And in each of those, we're going to put the 
little X icon. Danger, thanks. Call those out to me so so uh, it'll save time. Um, let's do four of those just to start. Back out of that section and then. Uh, Footer ID info. Moment of truth. That's a web app, right? Save. Bam. Right? And it's up. No, it looks ugly because. Oh, thank you. Yeah, guys, we're getting into it. We're getting into it now. Tab. It's all tab completion. Yeah, yeah. And it's not, um, you can't have spaces anywhere in the chain unless there are attribute values that are in double quotes. Uh, okay, so let's head over to main.scss, get rid of this uh, stuff that was part of this. So let's set some sensible defaults, body. I like this thing where the background is just off right. Uh, so let's make it what? E -E -E. Um, Say that's that. Nice, nice, nice. And then you like this one, don't you? Every everyone, slightly white text. Save, um, save the CSS file. Auto reload. There's, a, I don't know if you can see on that uh, display, but but there's that. So let's uh, let's do some of these to do stuff. These uh, to dos. Um, to do's is a ul uh, is a ul element, so I'm going to override Bootstrap's margin, um, and let's style the list items. So list style type should be none. Uh, height. Let's go with thirty. Padding ten. Uh, border. Bottom, so that we can uh, separate them and make them look a little nice. What do you think? DDD. I think that'll look good. And then uh, a fun little SAS thing. Uh, the ampersand is the placeholder for the current selector. So this current selector that we're in, uh, uh, class to do's descendant li. Um, if it's the first child, by the way, add a top order. Awesome. Let's save and see what that gives us. Not bad. OK, great. So uh, you know that input, I don't know if this is bootstrap, but and by the way, all this stuff is, is that I'm typing, of course, is namespaced within the, the to-dos class that within that UL, right? So that uh, it won't affect anything else on the page. But I don't like that that margin. There's like a margin top that's pushing the checkbox down. Get rid of that. Let's put our delete button over to the right. And let's get rid of it. But when we are, remember we are still, I think, here in what we're in. Uh, oh, you know what? I lied. All this needs to be in the LI because these are all children of the LI. Know that it's in Sublime. Select text, you can tab it in as a block. I like that one. Uh, da, da, da. So then in this li, but when the li has um, hover on it, we want this delete to display in line. And then for the span, Great, that's the behavior I want. Then for the span that actually contains uh, the name of our to-do, um, live coding, everybody. 
Uh, okay, so we set the thing to 30, so let's set this to 20. Line height to 1.5, so it fills up the full 30, and give it a little padding. Huh? 1.5 times the number of units in the font size. So in this case, it would be 1.5 times 20 pixels. Um, yeah, great, awesome. And then, by the way, we we want to we want to check things off our to do list. Oof, I'm getting nervous about the time. Okay, great, super. We can run this there. That's a lot. That's a lot better. And if I were, oh, I can't open the inspector without. But if I were to add to this the class completed, that wouldn't work. But you know, we can do it in the index.html file. Was it? There it is. Thank you. Uh, Actually, I'm going to change that to completed because there's other code that this may have, uh, that this may affect. There it is. Super. Awesome. Okay, so that, that's an okay look for, uh, for this quick and dirty, uh, but that's all right. Okay, so let's get to, let's get to coding pretty quick. Um, so yo... I'm going to scaffold out a model. I'm going to call it to do. Creates files for me. Suddenly in scripts, models, I have a to do model. Uh, so, right, it, and this is a define because it's defining the model for us. Um, pulls an underscore and backbone and fires a function. The, the things in the array are passed in as, as dependencies. Uh, or sorry, are passed in as arguments to the function that you have. So in the default, uh, needs a title, and it's going to be blank, and completed will be false off the thing. And then the, the only other thing our model really needs to do um, <clears throat> is, uh, is toggle itself on and off. So we'll call, we'll call toggle a function that... Uh, runs this save on the model uh, with the information completed is the opposite of this get completed. Yeah. Uh, anything else the model needs to do? No, I think so. And then we return it. Uh, we return it at the end of this call to define so that it can be consumed by other packages. Excellent. So. Um, so one to do is great, but we need many. So we scaffold out a collection. We're going to call it to do's. Um, cool. And so let's start. Let's start doing this. This is uh, we get a collections file. There it is. Models. Um, it scaffolds out some stuff. It makes some some assumptions about stuff. Uh, all these are, are paths that are relative to the scripts directory. Um, and it makes some assumptions. If it's a to-dos collection, it, it thinks it's looking at a to-dos model. Um, I name collections in plural and models in singular. I don't know. I don't know how you do it, but so this is pretty much uh, but you know it works for me. So gotta take away all those plurals. Um, that's good, but uh, the trouble is this will fail because there's no back end and Backbone wants to sync with something. So we are going to uh, install using Bower uh, a little script that lets us do local storage with, back, uh, with Backbone. So uh, I'm in the, the root of this app, right? So Bower uh, install and then a GitHub address. J E R O M E G N. I 
haven't mistyped anything. Great, super. So now when I bower, oh, I didn't do it. I didn't do it with save, so it wouldn't put it in. Stick that in the bower file. When I bower ls, uh, there it is. It's the second one in that list, and now we can consume it. In order to consume it, I have to tell um, I have to tell require where it is. So I'm going to add to this little shim that de defines where our modules are. Uh, backbone local storage. Um, it needs, what does it need? It needs backbone. I know that. And it uh, exports. Awesome. And then I'll tell it where to find the file. It's the name of the directory. And then you leave uh, you leave the .js off the file. All right. Excellent. So now this is all exposed to require.js so we can add to our to-dos collection that we want, in addition to backbone, we want backbone local storage as well. It'll pass that in as an argument so we'll give it a place to go. Um, give it a place to go and we're going to say that uh, model is to-do model and that the local storage will be new store and we'll just call it something. Thank you. Great. Okay. Um, okay, some views. Uh, sorry? Oh, was there? Where was I? Oh, thank you. Yeah, in that array. Cool. And I did this right. Yeah. Yeah, I typed a thing there. Awesome. Don't need this anymore. Actually, don't need that so much anymore. Um, Bower, uh, Bower's done. So, okay, we need a view. A view for that to-dos collection. Yo, know, backbone view. We just got that wrong. Oh, yeah, that's what we want. Um, okay, to do's. Uh, the to do's collection. So the to do's view. Uh, da, 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 da. So we have two things. It uses embedded JavaScript templates. Yeoman does out of the box. So we have um, uh, we have that, and we also have a views folder with to do's view in it. So uh, we're going to pull in jQuery underscore backbone and the templates, the JavaScript templates, use strict. Template is, it pre-populates for us uh, with the template that it's scaffolded out, which is great. Um, we're going to put this all within an li uh, on initialize. Damn, I thought this could be done. I thought this could be done in 50 minutes. Um, we got five more minutes. Can I switch to the cake that's already baked in the oven? I mean, will you will you think less of me if I do that? Uh, and don't just type out this stuff that I've typed before in front of you. Um, but I mean, the the advantage of that is you can sort of explain as you go. Uh, you can explain as you go. But let's actually cut out just so you can see, um, just so you can see the thing working. So to uh, you ever had the trouble with Sublime where it it uh, opens up a blank window and doesn't give you what you want? No. All right. Um, 
so we were talking we were talking there about the uh, about the to do's view um, when when it uh, initializes we're going to listen for some events so when models are are changed or destroyed we can update uh, when we click on toggle we're gonna we're gonna toggle the completed state which is a method defined in this object uh, ditto for click on the delete class which is going to clear um, when this when this Views, uh, when this view of all the to-dos of the to-dos collection renders, um, we get uh, we use the template uh, from the, the JSON output of the model, template those things, uh, and set that to the uh, the HTML of the element, uh, and we go through each one and toggle uh, whether they are completed or not. Toggle completed calls the function that we exposed in the model. And uh, clear runs backbones this model destroy, um, and the uh, the embedded JavaScript template looks a little bit like this. Um, the the you know relevant part the EJ the excuse me EJS part you know looks like uh, this, and we can check we can check whether the uh, checkbox should be checked or not, and we drop in the drop in the title. Um, other than that, not super much. The app view is, is maybe a little more interesting because the app view is actually the place where the to-dos collection is related to the to-dos view. Uh, so the app view is responsible for the ID of that, um, of that section that we put in. Uh, and we're listening for the event of uh, typing in the text box. We want to create uh, on enter, which is a, a method defined here. Um, so on initialize, we cache a couple things, start listening to some events. Um, this is normally where we would call fetch to get from our back end to get to pre-populate the contents of the page. We actually don't have a back end uh, yet, so, um, or at all, <laughs> I mean to say in this, uh, in this demo, uh, so methods also for adding one to do and for adding them all for when the element renders and then uh, the, for typing in the text box, the listener, um, 13 is the code for enter, so uh, does nothing if you haven't pressed enter or if there's no, if there's no text in the box. Um, otherwise, it creates a new to-do with, with the value of the trimmed title uh, and uh, sets completed on that task to false. Um, empties out the... Uh, empties out the um, empties out the text, the, the uh, input. The, uh, wow, anyone else need some coffee? Um, the index HTML is pretty much exactly what we had, except that this UL is now empty because it's going to be populated. And when I run, uh, oh, I'm running grunt server. I run grunt server. Um, Thank you. I think I can check this one off, right? Um, so this is, you know, so this is, so this is a backbone app that's that's running, and we can, you know, delete these. It destroys them. Um, the cool thing about the cool thing about this, and the thing that is actually kind of the point, is that looking at this, um, I can, I can grunt build. And it'll run a bunch of tasks, compiling CoffeeScript and whatnot, concatenating JavaScript, minifying things like this, and suddenly we have a uh, we have a tree structure that looks like this. Um, we still have require as a power component. We still have modernizer because we told it to separate that out. But suddenly. This is our app. This is the whole app that I just wrote uh, in there, and I haven't had—I mean, I haven't had to do anything to make that happen. Here's the the all that SAS that I wrote, um, including all of Bootstrap in there. Uh, in the index.html file, it goes in and rewrites the script tags um, to point uh, to point at the right the right places. I don't know about you, but this has really kind of changed the way I work. 
uh, on front end stuff and made some stuff. Um, I made some stuff that used to be very tedious to comply with best practices, uh, really possible uh, for a one for one person even uh, working by herself or himself. Um, so it's very cool. Anyway, uh, we're out of time. I don't know if there are questions, but thanks for watching. I hope you were astonished. <laughs> <laughs>